Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Scott Schell and I'm a specialist in the Germanic languages. I have a PhD in Germanic linguistics from the University of California, Berkeley, an MA in linguistics from Wayne State University, and a bachelor's degree in German. And today what I would like to do is go ahead and wrap up our Old Saxon personal name series today with part 12. And I'm going to be providing to you today actually nine names. And then uh, just briefly, I'll go ahead and actually explain to you how you can even create your own Old Saxon name. And like I say, on all my other Old Saxon personal name videos, these names are recorded in the Old Saxon speaking area and are not necessarily tied to the Halion specifically. These names are usually recorded between the years roughly 700 and 1000 CE. So our first name today is going to be Wigmold. Wigmold. This is literally battle or warrior and courage or heart or mind. Um, the reason it's sort of like it could be this or this or that uh, is because the word mold is actually a literal translation of that word is English mood. But uh, this was a word that had, it was sort of multifaceted, it had many different meanings, and it was definitely a part of the soul complex. So to get a real thorough understanding of that particular word and that soul part, I actually recommend that you just go ahead and watch the Old Saxon Soul Complex video. So this name was specifically recorded for a man, at least the attestation I've provided to you here. Um, but this name in this exact form was actually recorded for a woman as well. So this is one of those gender neutral names where it could be for a man or a woman, uh, similar to like the name Alex, where Alex could be for a man or a woman, uh, except, you know, Alexander obviously is for uh, a man, whereas Alexandria is for a woman. But in a short form, Alex can be for, you know, a man or a woman. And another example that I have given in my previous name videos is like Angel versus Angelo and Angela. And so this name is clearly for someone who is a warrior, someone who, who is clearly ready for war and has a courageous heart or mind. Our second name today is going to be Weeing. Weeing. However, of course, since you have the I there next to the other I, it was probably pronounced wing or something like that. But to separate those two words, it is literally we or like a holy place and then ing, which is referring to the God. So someone who is, you know, either descended from ing or someone who worships ing or possibly both. And so the gender for this name is actually not recorded, um, but the word ing is historically masculine. So this name must have been for a man. So this is one who is descended from Ing and is sacred. And so this name is, you know, for someone who is holy uh, and tied to that sort of sacred space idea. Again, this we here is directly related to Old Norse ve, um, as in like a sacred grove. And this is a perfect name for someone who sort of has these like gothi or priest-like qualities and one who is dedicated to Ing. And this name can be spelled in runic with an I plus an Ing rune or literally an I, an N, and a G rune. Uh, both ways are actually attested specifically in Gothic inscriptions. Our third name today is going to be Wildwolf. Wildwolf. This is literally wild wolf. The gender is not recorded in the sources. However, the word wolf is historically masculine across all of the Germanic languages. And so to that end, there's no reason to believe that this name was recorded for a woman. And so with this particular name, this is one who is sort of untamed and has the qualities of a wolf. As I explained with Wittekind's name in the previous video, this is for someone who is clearly living outside of societal norms um, because you have someone who is outside of the community or at least outside of convention. Our fourth name today is going to be Willibald. Willibald. This is literally will and bold. And this name was specifically recorded for a man. This is actually a pretty important name, um, as you know, simple as it might actually appear. Uh, to the Saxons and to a lot of the Germanic tribes, they would work things according to their own will. Uh, Willie or will here actually 
reflects the phrase in the Helion, for example, Warachta Afr is William. And that means wrought according to his will. Now, in this case, it's actually talking about the Christian God. However, that is one of the primary uh, conversion techniques in the Halion is to show that at least Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John in this context are actually carrying out the will of God rather than carrying out their own will. And so, you know, one of the um, most heathen things that you can do is actually work things according to your own will, not to the will of someone else. And so exercising one's will was significant to the Saxon worldview and was often connected to the idea of carrying out one's deeds, mit worden and mit werken, through words and through works. And our fifth name today is going to be Willeborg. Willeborg. This is literally Will Stronghold or like Will Hillfort. And this name was specifically recorded for a woman. So this is one who has a strong will and is steadfast. And for my entire discussion concerning the will, go ahead and review the previous name. Our sixth name today is going to be Willemold. Willemold. This is literally will, mood, or will heart, or will mind. Um, the attestation here is female. The suggested Halion form here is for a man. Uh, but again, like I discussed with the previous mold name in this video, uh, this is probably just a sort of gender neutral name. So this is for someone who possesses a strong will, heart, and or mind, and has all of the characteristics and connections to the will as explained in the name Willibald. And we have one more will name here for our seventh, and that is Willamund. Willamund. And this is literally Will Guardian. And the Latinized ending here on the attested form tells us that this name was indicated for a man. So this is one who is a protector uh, or a guardian and, of course, possesses a strong will, as in being able to carry out one's own will. And it also could be just understood as someone who is a protector or a guardian of the will. And to that end, it could be someone who is just sort of protecting one's will or one's self, in a sense. Our eighth name today is going to be Wolfjär. Wolfjär. This is literally Wolf Spear. The gender is not specified in the attestation. However, of course, Jär is historically a masculine noun, so the attestation must be for a man. So this is one who possesses a spear and has the qualities of a wolf. Uh, it's a very strong Odinic name with connections to like the Jär or Old Norse, um, like the Gar. Um, which literally means like spear unto me. And of course, we have all kinds of connections with the spear being thrown over the host uh, as a sort of sacrifice to Odin. And with the wolf connections, again, you have like the Ulf Hevnar. And uh, of course, you have the, the wolfish qualities of like the outlaw, in which case ties very closely to like the outlaws and in the raiding parties. Our very last ninth name in this entire series is going to be Wunirad. Wunirad. This is literally Joy Council. And this name was specifically recorded for a man. The reconstructed form here could be for either a male or a female. So again, it's like dealing with the Alex Alexandria Alexander situation, or Angel, Angela, Angelo. Uh, so this is a name for someone who gives good counsel and evokes happiness. This should be used for someone who is joyful, harmonious, and hopeful. Wuni here is actually directly connected to Proto-Germanic Wunyo, and uh, this disposition is also connected to Rat, uh, in that this is someone who offers counsel with the intent of bringing harmony during conflicts. All right, so like I was saying towards the beginning of the video, um, these names are great, you know, for people uh, wanting to look into the old Saxon personal names. But if you wanted to actually even just create your own name, it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, so the trick here is to at least be able to recognize two different roots in a name. 
And the gender for the name is always going to depend on the second root in the name. So I'll go ahead and here and just give a couple quick examples as to what I'm talking about. But if there's actually interest in here on getting this sort of like full tutorial on how to create a name, um, I'll be willing to do that, you know, after uh, I go ahead and cover some, some other material because uh, I've been talking about personal names for quite a long time now. So for example, the word Hild, H-I-L-D, um, no matter what word precedes that second root, that name will always be for a woman. So it could be, for example, Willahild, meaning will, battle courage, or will, battle. Or another example could be like Oshild. Even though the word Os is actually a masculine noun, it doesn't matter because the gender is always going to be dependent on that second root. So if I wanted to create a name and, you know, it was for a woman and she wanted to have the sort of pagan god qualities within her name, then we could use the word os and then just throw on um, a feminine root there. And then it's just oshild, which actually sounds pretty interesting. Um, I don't think it's attested, but again, it doesn't matter because these names specifically were almost meant to to be like that. Right. You could compound all these different names together. And as long as you knew what the gender was of the second root, then the first one is just literally describing the second root. So again, Oshild literally means like God, probably Woden or maybe one of the Asir gods. And then Hild meaning battle courage or battle. So it's like you have this sort of God name. It's like pagan God battle courage, which sounds really cool. Uh, so that's just, you know, one example. Uh, one more here is, for example, the word yer is always masculine. So no matter what the word is in front of yer that's describing yer, it's going to always be a name for a man. So even if I wanted to use the word hild, as long as hild is describing yer, it's actually a name for a man. You're probably wondering, like, well, you just said that hild is always going to be for a female. Well, it's always going to be for a female if it's the second root word. It's always the second root word, which is going to describe the gender. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, I think I gave a total of about 119 different names, actually. And, uh, you know, again, this series was just to spread this sort of awareness that uh, there's more out there than just the Scandinavian sources. You know, all the popularity with Marvel and everything has got everyone fixated on Vikings and, and Thor and Loki. Um, but, but, you know, that's all just like temporal fleeting interests. So for those of us who are really into this sort of thing and really interested in heathenry and reconstructing a lot of, you know, heathen ideas... Um, this honestly, this series I've given you is probably one of the most genuine things that you can do because, or at least one of the most genuine things that you can sort of incorporate into your everyday life, because you're also not just living in the past with these names. Um, because again, you can actually create your own and make the tradition sort of alive again. Um, anyhow, that's all I got for y'all today. And I really hope that you enjoyed the series. Please sub like the video share it and uh, drop any questions you got below. If you're curious as to how to make a certain name, go ahead and ask me, um, you know, in the comments section and I'll see if I can answer it. Take care.